Good to see you tonight. Did you like those songs? Get to hear some good songs. I hope you'll learn them. Learn your Bible verse. Bring your Bible, bring a friend, and we will get started here in just a minute. Let's bow our heads, all right? We'll pray together and ask for the Lord's help and blessing. We like to pray around here before we do anything and after we do anything, too. So let's pray together. Please close your eyes to respect others' privacy. Thank you, dear Lord. The opportunity to meet together with each of, the, each of the boys and girls, we ask for your blessing upon them, all the workers, all the adults, and we pray that Jesus Christ would get the glory, would be honored, that each of our hearts, each of our tongues would be thankful for your kind mercy to us so unworthy of it. Bless, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, it's time for songs. Here comes Jennifer. Hey, welcome back. Does everybody um, get something to eat before you came? That's what I want to know. Do you look like you are you all ready, energized? Okay. All right. We're going to sing our um, theme song first. So let's do that one. The one that we're going to, a simple offering. Okay, my question is, do you think we can do it one more time and don't look? I know it's only the second night, but I think you already know it. You think you know it? Well, some people don't know it. If you weren't here last night, no pressure. Just try to pick up with what we're doing. But just see the people who were here last night, see how many words you know, okay? So we're not going to look. Help me give you anything. I saw a lot of people who knew all the words to that already in just one night. Don't worry. We'll put the words back on so we, the other people can learn it. But this, let's do um, the song about Jonah that we were doing last night. You'd better do it. Um, we're only going to do the first two verses of this song because that's all we've learned so far. But there is a third verse. We'll learn that later. But do you remember it was telling the story about Jonah, right? So it, it says... It says, God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh, that old wicked town. Remember, Nineveh, he, Jonah was, was supposed to go there to tell them that they were doing wrong, right? God was sending them there, sending him there. And it says, but Jonah didn't want to go where he was sent. So he, remember, he went in the opposite direction, didn't he? He went the wrong way. It says, until that big fish came along. What fish are they talking about? Who can raise their hand and tell me what fish we're talking about? <gasps> A whale, like a really big fish, right? And what did it do? Do you know? It, it ate him, right? Because they threw him overboard, and the fish swallowed him, didn't it? It says, that big fish came along to show old Jonah he was wrong, and after that ordeal, he changed his mind and went. So after God sent that fish to swallow him up, and then he got a second chance because the fish spit him out, right? He got a second chance, and then he changed his mind, and he went the right way and went to Nineveh after that. Okay, and then um, also the second verse said, I'm just going to read it to you here. It said, Jonah thought he'd fool the Lord. He found a ship and got on board. Remember that? Away they went, a sailing out, out upon the sea. After a while, the sea waves roared. The men threw Jonah overboard, and then he knew he wasn't where he ought to be. 
So those are the two verses we're going to work on tonight. All right, here we go. See how much you remember. God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh, that old wicked town, but Jonah didn't want to go where he was sent. Until a big fish came along and to all Jonah he was wrong, and after that ordeal he changed his mind and went. When God tells you what to do, you better do it. You better do it. You better do it. It doesn't pay to disobey. He'd fool the Lord, he found a ship and got on board. Away they went to sailing out upon the sea. After a while, the sea waves roared, the men threw Jonah overboard, and then he knew he wasn't where he ought to be. When God tells you what to do, you better do it. You better do it. You better do it. It doesn't pay to disobey, that's all there's to it. question. This is for pastor. Is there a way when we get to the um, refrain part of it to make it blank? Okay, so we're going to look for the verses, but we're not going to look for the chorus part of it, right? When it's the part that we can, we can probably do that already, right? So let's stand up. We're going to sing it. We're going to sing those two verses, but when it gets to the refrain part, it's just going to go blank. for a minute and we're going to do one more song we're going to do i'm going to heaven can't wait that one with the clapping because i like that one okay we're flipping it. ready i'm going to heaven can't wait gonna see jesus can't wait heaven is wonderful Way, way faster. Way faster. I told, I told the pianist last night over there, I said, when we say faster, we got to go like faster, faster, not just like a little faster. So we're going to try it. I'm going to heaven. Can't wait. Gonna see Jesus. Can't wait. Heaven is wonderful. I was going to say yell louder, but then, <laughs> I don't know. 
Okay, good job. We'll have some more music in a little bit. You can sit back down. And now I think it's time for Miss Janice to do the missionary story. Wow, your singing, your singing was great. Loved hearing. Oh, perfect. Thanks a lot. Love hearing you all sing. And who can remember what is the name of the missionary that we're learning about? <laughs> That's kind of a dumb question since the picture's up there. Zachary. Yes, Hudson Taylor is right there. Very good. And today, today is part two. So yesterday, we learned the kind of a family that Hudson Taylor grew up in. Let's see. I'll show you some pictures from yesterday. Nope, not that. Okay. Pastor McAvoy, do we have any pictures from before today or not? I can't. Yes, I didn't remember how to find them. Remember you said you wanted to skip them. It's right now, well, I can get them, I think. They're right there. Good. Yeah, I, I will use them. They're watching what I'm doing here. <laughs> I mean, they are right back there. Okay. I have to see where you can unskip. On a little iPad, and I don't know. You know how to unskip on an iPad? Anybody know? Brooklyn knows. No, maybe not. <laughs> I can just, if that's there, I can just do that. Well, they're, they're skipped, though. You, you won't show them. See? It's black. Okay, it's all right. I won't use them. Sorry, baby. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Okay, folks. <laughs> So today we're going to learn a little more about Hudson Taylor. Yesterday, remember, one wonderful thing that happened to Hudson Taylor is he got saved. Remember that? He had grown up in a Christian family where he heard about the Lord all the time from his mom and dad. They loved Jesus. And they would, what was that, Carmen? We'll get a picture in a minute, okay? Thanks for asking. We'll get, some, we'll get some new pictures in a minute, okay? But his mom and dad taught him all about the Lord Jesus. And when he was a little boy, where did Hudson say he wanted to go one day to serve the Lord? Where? What country? Raise your hand, okay? Okay. I'm going to pick Libby. Where did he say he wanted to go? To China, yes. He wanted to go to China. But when he got a little older, what happened to Hudson Taylor? And this was a little sad. Jeffrey? Yes, he did. That's true. That's true. He did lose hope in God for a while. And what was it that Hudson was really, after a while, he's like, ah, uh, I want to have this or that. What was the kind of thing that he was wanting instead of serving the Lord? Mercedes. He, he wanted to be rich, have a big house, stuff like that, right? And that kind of took away his desire for God. And, you know, the Bible talks about that. Sometimes when people hear preaching or the Bible... The, Jesus said, be careful because riches and cares and pleasures of this life can choke the word of God where the seed won't grow. And that's, that's a good warning. That's what happened to Hudson Taylor. But he did get saved. And what did Hudson and his sister, Amelia, what did they like to do on Sunday afternoons after they had already eaten their lunch? Zachary. That is exactly right. They would go out and tell people about Jesus. They would hand out tracts. You know what tracts are? The little papers where you, people can read about them and find out about Jesus. And they would talk to them and give them tracts and tell people how Jesus came to be the Savior of the world. And they could believe on Jesus and he would wash 
their sins away. Boys and girls, have you done that? Think about that. Have you prayed, and you don't have to raise your hand yes or no, just think in your mind, have I done that? Have you asked the Lord Jesus to wash your sins away and make you God's child? We are all sinners, aren't we? We're all sin. We good. We have we are all sinners, and that's something we need to do. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When we were born as a baby, right? All of us were born as a baby. Jesus said we need to be born again and have Jesus to be our Savior and have a new heart and where he'll wash all our sins away. Nothing else will wash our sins away, right, boys and girls? Do you know that? Nothing else will wash our sins away, only the blood of Jesus, only as we believe on him. And so Hudson Taylor, now I'm going to show you a new picture, Carmen. Where is Carmen? There you are. <laughs> Look here, Carmen. There is a new picture. Because Hudson Taylor, as he got a little old, older, he would go, remember, he really wanted to be a missionary to China. And so sometimes he would go to kind of the poor areas near he lived, where he lived. What country did Hudson Taylor live in? Not America. OK, uh, let's see. Thackeray. He lived in England, right. And so Hudson would go. Oh, wow. Sorry about that, folks. There we go. <laughs> he would go to the poor areas and tell people about the Lord Jesus. And sometimes the people there would get kind of mad at him. And they'd sometimes try to beat him up or something like that, even tear his papers, his tracks. We don't want to hear that. But did that stop Hudson Taylor, do you think? It didn't. He was ready to suffer for Christ. And he kept telling people about the Lord, which is just wonderful. Hudson wanted to learn to trust the Lord for everything. And so he just kept serving the Lord. And what were some of the things Hudson Taylor was trying to do in order to be a good missionary in China one day? Can anybody remember some of the special things he tried to do? Josiah, what did he do? Okay, somebody else? Libby? I mean, Hannah? He tried to learn how to do what? The things that they did in China? Well, good, good guess. Anthony? He tried to learn how to preach, and that's what he's doing, telling people about Jesus. Reese, what else? Okay, Maddie, trying new foods, that's a good thing for all of us to do if we want to be a missionary. Yes, it really is, because in other countries, sometimes they eat things that we would say is weird. <laughs> okay, Mercedes, Yes, he tried to learn how to be a good doctor. That is right. And remember, he used to be sick when he was a little boy, so he would get up and take walks outside to try to get more healthy so he would be strong and healthy. Yes, Carmen? Yep, strong by eating good food, very good. I have a little sad story to tell you. Hudson Taylor, there was a really nice Christian music teacher that lived around the same time, same area where Hudson Taylor did, and they became friends, and he grew to love her. And he thought, maybe she could be a missionary with me. We could get married, and she could go to China. She loved the Lord. She was Christian. But guess what? Her parents, when Hudson Taylor asked them, could I ask your daughter to marry me? They said, you can as long as she doesn't go to China. And Hudson Taylor talked to the girl, and she said, yeah, that's what I think, too. And Hudson Taylor thought, wow, should I marry this girl, or should I tell her, no, I won't, because I believe God wants me to go to China. What do you think Hudson Taylor did? Raise your hand. 
This is probably a guess, but what do you guess that he did? Anybody want to try? Kyle? He said, no, you're right. He said, God put it on my heart. I want to put God first. Wow, do you think that was a hard decision for Hudson Taylor to do? Uh, Anthony? I think it really was. I'll show you that picture. Does, doesn't she look kind of sad? And he's probably saying, what? You don't want to go to China? Your parents won't let me. But he's like, I have to do what God wants. And he did. He put God first. Well, one other thing Hudson Taylor wanted to do was to learn how to trust God. And he said, you know, when I'm in China, I won't be around everybody else in my own country where I could go get a job and earn money. I'm going to have to learn to trust God. So I think I told you that he worked for a doctor. He was a Christian doctor and a surgeon. The doctor was really nice, but he was rather forgetful. And he recognized, the doctor recognized he was forgetful. He said, Hudson, please, I forget things. But if you can remind me, I'll give you your money whenever you need it for your paying for your, the payment for your job. And Hudson thought, I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to trust in God. He prayed about it, okay? It's not like, oh, I'll just do this for fun. He was like, in China, I'll have to trust God, so I'm going to practice doing that now. And, and that is what he did. <laughs> Hilarious. Here we go. This happens sometimes. Uh-huh. That's why we're glad Pastor McAvoy's here. Yeah, One reason. <laughs> okay, thank you. So let me tell you this. So this one time when Hudson Taylor, being as he was a doctor's helper, he was visiting a sick person. The, father, the husband said, please, could you come and help me? My wife is very sick. And Hudson Taylor had one coin in his uh, pocket. It was a small amount worth about 60 cents of our money, but it was one coin. And he went and prayed for the lady, and he told the man about the gospel, about Jesus. And the man said, please pray for us. We don't have any money to help my wife. And as Hudson Taylor was praying, he thought, I have a coin in my pocket. I should give it to them. And that is a godly thing to do. And so, but he didn't know what would happen. How would God meet his needs? But he thought, I'm healthy. This lady has nothing. She's very sick. So he took out his coin and he gave it to the man. You may have it. And he left the house and he was very happy. Why would he be happy? He has no money left. The reason he was happy, because as a Christian, he had done what God wanted him to do. He had helped somebody else and he thought, well, the Lord will have to meet my needs. I don't have anything left. The next morning, look what happened. He, or maybe that day, I don't remember, but he got something in the mail. It was a letter. When he opened the letter, there was a pair of gloves, and there was a piece of money that was four times as much as the money he had given away. The money he had given away was about worth our 60 cents. The money he got in the envelope was $2.50. So it was like, dear Lord, you provided the need for me. Soon after that, Dr. Hardy was going to be paying, um, was going to be giving Hudson, it was time for him to give Hudson his money. And he said, Hudson, isn't it time for you to get paid for your job? Yes, it is, said Hudson Taylor. Well, I wish you would have reminded me because just this morning I gave all the money to the bank and I don't have any left. I wish you would have reminded me. And Hudson Taylor thought, oh, dear Lord, I don't know what to do. I owe my rent today. What am I going to do? But he just went through the day doing his job for, with the doctor. At the end of the day, the Dr. Hardy came to Hudson Taylor and said, the strangest thing happened. One of my most rich patients paid me today, and I did not expect it. So here I have money for you to pay you for your job. And Hudson Taylor thought, 
Praise the Lord, now I have money to pay my rent. And he was learning to trust God. I have two more quickly things I'm going to tell you before we're done. Hudson Taylor, of course, was wanting to go to be a missionary in China. But as he was working as a doctor's helper, he helped somebody who was, had died, but they were, had been very sick. When he was working with a person there doing something to help, he got sick. He got so sick that the doctor said, Hudson, I'm afraid you better go home and prepare. You aren't going to live very much longer. And Hudson Taylor said, well, I may not, but I believe God has work for me to do in China. So I'm going to go home and I will rest, but I, he might spare my life. And do you know, after several weeks, Hudson Taylor was very, very sick. But do you know he got better? God made him well. So the next thing is, when should Hudson Taylor go to um, China? I forgot one step. When he got really sick, he had gone to London to work in a hospital to learn even more about medicine. So that kind of uh, made it a little longer. Do you think Hudson Taylor must be pretty old by now? As I was reading this story, I thought, man, he must have been old doing all these things. He wasn't. I'll tell you in a minute. Hudson Taylor, he, he heard that China was opening up for missionaries. So he thought, dear Lord, it must be time where I can go to China. And he went to the mission board to see the man there. And he said, I was thinking it might be time for me to go to China because I've heard China can have missionaries. And the man said, guess what? I was just getting ready to write you a letter about that because you can go to China. And so Hudson Taylor got a ship ticket to go to China. Now, when he got on the ship, guess how old he was? Anybody want to take a guess? Don't guess too old. OK, don't guess too old. Uh, wait one minute. Brooklyn, what do you think? 14? He was older than that. That's a good guess. No, let's let Carmen, how old do you think? 15? No. Kyle, you got it on the nose. Kyle got it on the nose. He was 21 because this was September 19th, 1853. He was born on May what? May, May 21st, 1832. He was actually 21 years old when he went to China. So think of that, boys and girls. He was not a very old man going to China. 21 to you might seem old, but it's not very old. Here he is going to China. One more picture I'll show you before we're done, and then it's game time with Mr. Philip. <laughs> okay, so at the, at the ship, they had, at one point, the um, waves were really big, like we've been learning about our ship, like Jonah, really big waves. God stopped that, but then one other time, there was no wind at all. And the ship was moving into the part of the uh, sea where it was going to run aground next to some rocks. And they were like, oh, no, what are we going to do? The ship captain was a Christian. And he said, I don't know what we're going to do, Hudson. And Hudson said, you know what? There is one thing we can do. And we will stop there for tonight, and we'll see what it is tomorrow, OK? One thing you can do. Now, look what time it is now. <laughs> so Mr. Philip, should they go with you? Yeah. You tell, follow Mr. Philip's instructions. <laughs>